Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt Napoli here. Welcome to episode 152 of Snack Minute. In this episode, we're going to actually get introduced to the Thousand Eyes CLI with our friend Miguel. Miguel, would you mind introducing yourself? And then we'll, we'll get into what you wanted to talk about today. Of course. Uh, my name is Miguel Hernandez. I'm a technical account manager from Thousand Eyes. And today is a pleasure to, to be with you, team. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, um, you know, we talk about automation and programmability a lot here on Snack Minute and, um, you know, trying to move people away from the CLI. But I know that that's not always the best use case for people. And so it was interesting to us that uh, you were bringing Thousand Eyes CLI to our understanding. Um, so why don't you kind of jump in and, and show us what it is and how it potentially makes things easier for people? Of course, actually, Thousand Eyes CLI is application that I'm that is looking to bring the gap in between the documentation and the learning curve. So what I'm trying to do with this particular application is to eliminate the necessity for the people to learn the documentation of the Thousand Eyes API. So basically, once they are installing the application, they are ready to extract information directly from the API to running commands such as in a Cisco's network device. So simply by running show commands, they will be able to collect data without knowing any kind of programmability skill or, or knowing the documentation from Thousand Eyes API, as mentioned before. Oh, interesting. So I like this, Matt. We've, we've brought Thousand Eyes to Snackers from a product perspective, just the, mm -hmm. the GUI, the UI, and how to leverage it and what's there. And that was uh, our buddy Abdiel. And then we had an episode on how to leverage the APIs to deploying agents and all of this. And now we're doing a CLI of how to leverage CLI to get the information you need from the device. It's pretty cool. We do a good everything, job. So that everything good. old is new again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, Miguel. So tell us a little bit about the CLI tool. What is it? Where do I get it from? What information do I have? And I'm sure you're going to show us some cool demo afterwards. Of course, actually, you can go to the following portal to understand deeper how to install the application. So to get it started, you just need to follow up the instruction. Uh, basically, it's like download the zip file that is in the GitHub repository. And afterwards, it's just following up the instruction. It's quite simple. Uh, you just need to run Python. Uh, it is suggested to run 3.11. Uh, that is the version where the, tool, the application was developed. And afterwards, you just need to install the requirements and the libraries that are required for the Python to execute properly the application. Once there, actually, you just need to go to your terminal and go to the directory where this executable is installed, and then run this command. Once there, as you can see, actually, I'm just executing the main application that is tosinize-clite.pi. And then the application is going to ask you for the token. It's quite important that in order to retrieve the token, you just need to, do, to go to your sandbox in Thousand Eyes. And for gravity, I actually, you just need to go to users and roles and generate a new bidder token. Those far, I already created the token, so it's not required for me to recreate it because I already have it handy. But in your sandbox, if you haven't created, you will have the option here uh, that is a, a, a slightly different option that is to create the token. So once there, just grab the token. You need to save it carefully. It's like your password, so avoid to sharing it with others and put the comment there. To verify all the comments that we have at our disposal, we can run this word that is show, and you can verify all the comments that you have available in the application. So it's quite simple. For instance, if I want to verify all the agents available in my sandbox, I can run the, the command show agents. And as you can see, the information is there. I will run a second command. This time, for instance, show alerts rules. And as you can see, the information is printed out just out of the box. So I want to minimize the learning curve for the documentation. Well, it's, it's quite simple by running this, this application. Yeah, I think that's pretty smart because we are, you know, we do work with a lot of um, engineers that love to live in the CLI. And um, I noticed that you kind of uh, take taken some of the vernacular that is used within the command line for like iOS XE and iOS XR with the show commands. 
What are some other commands that might be kind of in the same family of familiarity with our, our engineers out there, our network engineers out there that, that you can show us? Something important to highlight from the, the application is that you can translate the data from, uh, for instance, JSON to a different format. So looking for the same command, I'm going to print out the show accounts, for instance. And as you can see, you can identify the account identifiers from a sandbox. Those file is not quite friendly. We are printing out the information in JSON status. So if I want to change the format, I just need to type the word file. And for instance, translate it to CSV information. Oh, cool. As you can see, the information is much readable now. And I, I noticed uh, an AID. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. The account group identifier is the information that is defined to segment the information in your sandbox in thousand eyes. It's quite important because you can split the information based upon department, for instance. So one account group identifier is for finances. Uh, the other one is for the network team. The other one might be for security purposes. So it's quite important to run um, all the comments with this particular identifier that belongs to the department where you want to collect the data. Otherwise, uh, well, the application will not be able to retrieve the call related to that department. So for instance, if I want to recollect all the information uh, for the endpoints that belongs to a particular department, in this case, user one underscore T, I can run the common show endpoints, AID, and then graph the number that belongs to it. Oh, cool. Likewise, for another command such as show enterprise. I'm sorry, shop agents. So thus far, I'm collecting the information for the show agents that belongs to that particular account group identifier. So is there the capabilities? Um, so I can see the data in my terminal here. Is there capabilities? Let's say I want to build out a report, an external report outside of the dashboard. Can I export the data to a file somewhere? Of course. Uh, let me export it to a file in your Part this directly. So for that, I'm going to run the common show agents. This time, I'm going to use a more uh, human readable format. So for that, I'm going to execute the word file and then human. And I, I'm going to use the syntax write to save it that directly in the disk. As you can see, the application is generating a new file that is ready to be inspected in my code editor. I'm going to open that. I love how it's, it's dot human. <laughs> We're doing less and less with humans as we speak. Yeah. So there you go. As you can see, I can either read directly the report from my terminal, or also I can open it in my text exit, my text editor. Sorry. So as you can see, the information is now in my code editor and is ready to be shared with my colleagues and my manager. Um, I have two kind of curveball questions coming at you. Is there a Thousand Eyes Python SDK? Yeah, actually, there is a SDK that was just released recently by engineering. And well, that information can be also shared with the team in the comments. Well, the uh, the other interesting thing I was thinking for those engineers that are maybe a little bit um, tentative to actually get into REST APIs, they, in theory, could implement this. <laughs> Um, into, uh, you know, some Python code as well and, and use the commands that they're potentially a little more comfortable with. I could see, I could see that happening as well. That, that'd be an interesting use case. Um, so I do have one more question before we kind of wrap up here, because we are, we are unfortunately running out of time. These things go so fast. So, um, I noticed you put the authentication key in, um, at the beginning here when you signed in, is there a way that a user could save that on, um, before or so they don't have to enter in every time they run the application? Of course. Actually, in order to save the token, you can do that directly in your environment. You just need to identify the kind of shell that you have in cool. your operating system. Uh -huh. In my case, I'm using Mac OS. So for instance, I'm using C shell. I just need to save the beater token with this particular variable, T underscore beater, and the token as I was displaying it in the UI. And afterwards, the application is no longer requiring you to, to type every time the, the token. 
In that way, you will be able to execute the application and the information will be just at your disposal. Yeah, a very, very helpful tool. Um, and so uh, awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us today, Miguel. You are a first time, uh, first time guest on Snack Minute and we all ask all our first time guests uh, before we wrap up, uh, what superpower would you like to have and why? Well, I would like to have the ability to connect my brain directly to internet. So in that way, I will have access to any kind of information in a matter of seconds. Oh, no need of a cell phone or mobile to have an answer. <laughs> that that specifically connecting to the internet, that's a new one. That could go both ways. It could be really good or really, really bad. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's right, actually. Uh, it's fun to think about, though. It's fun to think about that. Totally, totally. Thank you, Miguel. This has uh, been informative. Uh, snackers, thank you for your time. Uh, stick around for our next, our next week's episode of uh, Snack Minute. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you.